MXUX. I just want to make a quick video here, hopefully a quick video, on the Lordstown Q3 uh, earnings call we just had. And I'm not going to go through a lot. I'm, I'm going to focus this on what I think shareholders would be interested in. And I'm going to go through some key points here and come to a conclusion. I'm not going to do a lot of financial analysis. Uh, I'm going to focus in on just certain aspects of the call. This is kind of a gut reaction to the call and a, a uh, overall analysis. And again, this is focused on stockholders. Um, let's just get started. Um, Elon Musk recently commented on Rivian, reaching mass production and break-even cash flow is the true test. Scaling uh, production and supply chain is key. And let's get into the, how that relates. And, and I think this is all very true. This is so true. And um, let's see how that relates to the Q3 uh, call from Lordstown Motors. The uh, Foxconn purchase and contract manufacturing agreement should solve the problems of scaling and production and supply chain. Foxconn's an expert in this. They have a lot of weight in the world and they have a lot of capital and uh, they want to make this work so i think uh, by uh, lordstown turning over the reins of production uh, that this meets you know half of what uh, reaching mass production scaling production and supply chain uh, if foxconn can't do it no one can do it you know, break-even positive cash flow is the question that LMC has to answer now. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of positives here. First of all, the the loss was lower by five cents than I mean, the the loss was less by five cents than projected. I think it was 54 instead of 59 percent uh, cents uh, per share uh, for the quarter. So uh, even with everything that's going on, uh, Lordstown is still operating efficiently or lowering their uh, loss per quarter. Anyway, let's just get back to this. Uh, the variable manufacturing rates uh, via contract manufacturing with uh, um, Foxconn is going to lower operating expenses for Lordstown. It's going to enable them to ramp up and ramp down and not have to keep the uh, the expenses going in between those periods it's going to allow them to control the the amount of uh, uh, of ramp uh, you know they could wait until they have confirmed orders to build the trucks it's going to operate very much uh like the tesla model only uh, having a, a third party uh, involved with the manufacturer and i think this is a great move for lordstown and it's going to lower operating expenses they're going to be able to focus those expenses on periods when they uh, have demand and so forth and it's going to allow them to ramp up um, the contract manufacturing is going to i lordstown now has 600 people on staff there I think it's going to lower this. I think a lot of those people are going to go over to uh, Foxconn. And uh, and it's also going to stabilize the LMC employee headcount. Uh, the manufacturing uh, employees are going to be replaced by um, marketing and, uh, you know, sales administration employees, I would imagine. So uh, this is another... Uh, lower operating expense for Lordstown. Uh, so overall, the sale of the plant lowers operating expenses for Lord, uh, Lordstown. Also, uh, now I don't have the numbers on this, but I'm just going with um, what I know to be, feel to be true, is the R&D costs are slowing and diminishing. Um, right now, Lordstown is basically where Rivian is. And uh, Rivian has made 100 vehicles. They sold, they, they're have all gone to employees. They're probably, I don't know, they're not saying, but they're probably PPV vehicles. Uh, Lordstown has produced basically the same amount of PPV uh, uh, vehicles uh, for testing of airbags and so forth. So Lordstown is really kind of on par with Rivian. I mean, not cash wise, but certainly production wise. So. Uh, we're at the point where the R&D costs are diminishing for Lordstown, uh, and they are basically set up. I mean, once they get certified and they're um, 
uh, their hub production line is certified, which I am not sure exactly what that means. Uh, I don't know if it's certified. I don't know if that's the right term. But but in any case, as soon as that's ready to go, uh, and they are producing hub motors for these 100 vehicles at the plant, uh, they're, they're all ready to go. Okay, so they don't have a lot of R&D left to go. So what do, what do they have? They have uh, selling, administration, and general expense is an issue. And this is, this is one of the problems that's been nagging them and draining, bleeding cash off of them. And part of this uh, involves the response to the SEC slash DOJ investigation. I am sure they have to have a law firm on retainer, and this is X, X, X amount of dollars a month and whatever other expenses they have to meet demands from these uh, two government agencies. This is this is draining precious cash uh, from Lordstown. Um, it's really uh, the one thing they can't control. They've been very efficient with their cash, um, you know, the application of their capital. But this is just, it just doesn't want to end. And uh, this is a problem, okay? And this is, this is the main problem I see, is this... Um, this uh this this sag here is you know it's it's an issue oh i can't get that to highlight well anyway the point is um they have a problem with uh the legal expenses they're facing uh the capex to fund contract manufacturing is an issue now they have moved the manufacturing to uh, foxconn but they still have to pay to have the vehicle produced and they, Foxconn, I imagine, is going to supply all the parts and everything, but there's going to be a bill of materials and also a fee to Foxconn uh, for building the, the vehicle, and then they're going to take their margin over top of that. So they have to have CapEx to fund the, the manufacturing. Uh, that's an issue. So we got this uh, right here, this... SAG, uh, the legal, the CapEx to fund, uh, and, and it's always a problem with a startup, uh, is an issue. And also the delay in startup production is an issue. I, I actually uh, ex expected a uh, delay in production. Now, if we have an, uh, and you know, let me just explain this why. <laughs> For example, I was reading that the um, the brake system chips, the, the the circuit board that that powers the uh, the braking, the uh, uh, automatic braking, the, the safety braking uh, for vehicles, for GM vehicles, and every other vehicle has chips in it that are in short supply, and this is causing a bottleneck. So this this, along with other issues, are uh, are are delaying it. In any case, you know, to expect a delay is to expect a delay. I think if we have another delay after this, that that is going to be a problem. This delay I expected, you know, there was set for September. I think this is why Rivian rushed the, their uh, launch. I don't think they were actually ready to launch. I think they did it to beat Lordstown. And then it was uh, moved to April next year and now it's been moved back again but you know they're using the uh, GM parts catalog and GM is expected it has delays and they're using the same parts and they're having delays so this is to be expected um, on the positive side you know per pre previous analysis the first two years of production are sold Schmidt who left I'm, I really would like to know what went on there, but the point is, he is redundant now that Foxconn has taken over. Foxconn probably has their own people, and he might have wanted to leave. Uh, you know, he has other interests, and uh, he's had a major accomplishment here. Uh, maybe he wanted to move on, and um, anyway, it, it's irrelevant. But uh, as he said, uh, the first two years of production are sold. So. That's basically where we are. Um, now, let's just talk about the, the general market 
of uh, for the Endurance. My previous analysis shows the Endurance is a better fleet truck than the Lightning. It is. It just is. And it's also a better work truck. It's the only electric work truck out there. And it has no competition for people that actually want to haul stuff. You got these, you know, country club pickups, uh, these grocery getters like the Rivian with, you know, a tent that looks like something you'd buy your 10-year-old daughter to put in the backyard and a, a $5,000 camping kitchen that has a $90 electric hot plate in it. Give me a break. Anyway, looks like a Honda Ridgeline. It's not a work pickup. But anyway, if, uh, the Endurance is a better fleet truck than the Lightning. Uh, as well, you know, the Lightning, I'm not going to go through the analysis over and over again, but there's a weight problem. There's a charging problem. Uh, there's a hauling problem. Uh, the, the, the diminished load it can handle, the strict weight requirements of the bed, so on and so forth. I'm not going to get into it. You can watch my previous videos. So let's just move on here. Uh, issue, the new EV incentives favor Ford, making, it makes the enhanced longer range lightning equivalent, uh, fleet truck, uh, it's equivalent to the endurance in price. And this is the one with the bigger battery. So that's an issue. Um, but again, I think, uh, the endurance is a much more effective vehicle than that vehicle. It's lighter. It's more efficient. In it's energy use. It's capabilities are better. It's suspension is better. Even with the incentives, I think it's a better truck. And I'll go through this later. Uh, delay in the start of production should put Ford LMC a launch in the same time frame. This is unfortunate. This is what Ford is planning. Uh, Lord Sound Motor should come out at exactly the same time. It's going to be overwhelmed by press on Ford. But we're not going to the overall market. We're going to the fleet market, and they've already been working on selling the fleets for a long time. Um, so let me just go through what I think about these two issues. Fleet owners calculate carefully. Uh, the Endurance is still a better fleet vehicle with lower cost of ownership. Uh, the complexity and the charging demands and the weight of the Ford Lightning, especially the enhanced longer range fleet model, um, make the, the endurance. I mean, these fleet guys, they, they have spreadsheets. I don't know. Uh, in my opinion, uh, the endurance is still a better truck, even with, uh, the, uh, price equivalency. Uh, absolutely. Uh, issue, will Ford fleet LV, uh, EV sell at manufacturers suggested retail price? Others have not. A significant dealer markup over Ford MSRP now on every model. Could this eat up the entire cost advantage for Ford? Here's the thing. I don't know what percentage of, uh, Ford fleet sales are direct sales or which ones go through fleet management companies or dealerships or fleet dealers. I don't know what their model is. This is something I'm going to be looking into. But, and I've, I've mentioned it here, uh, what percentage of Ford fleets will be direct to country, direct to customer. Uh, LMC will be 100% direct to customer fleet sales. But if they have any kind of middleman Ford, I, I mean... Uh, there is a video I was watching, and I think I have it listed in my playlist for Lordstown Motors, of a guy who went to buy a new Bronco, negotiated the price, went to pick it up, and the dealer told him, oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be an extra $10,000. And, you know, this is like a $40,000 vehicle. They were asking for a 20, 25% dealer markup. And the guy negotiated it down to $9,000, and he thought he got a deal. Um... I think this is going to happen with the fleet trucks, too. Anything that's going through a third party that's not coming from Ford, um, they're going to mark it up. Uh, and I think this could eat up the entire <clears throat> entire uh, EV credit uh, supplied by the government. Um, so, again, uh, what percentage of, of Ford fleet sales would be direct-to-customer sales? And LMC is going to be 100% direct-to-customer fleet sales. So, 
if there's a middleman involved with Ford, I mean, that's, forget it. You know, it's going to be, they're going to be marking up those trucks. Uh, LMC may have a, an advantage with direct sales and a one price model. You know, if Ford has indirect indirect sales, or if even a percentage of the Ford sales are indirect sales, they're going to be marking them things up. This is something to think about. This is something that needs to be looked into. You know, what percentage? What percentage of the sales is uh, direct to customer sales? But anyway, I think uh, Lordstown Motors actually has an advantage here. Uh, so anyway, after going through these issues with the main competition, which seems to be Ford. Um, you know, the issues, I, I think uh, things are moot with the Ford fleet sales. I mean, there's going to be a percentage of people that are going to be uh, loyal to Ford or whatever. Uh, but any thinking fleet manager is going to go with the endurance. I think a lot of them have already made the decisions or at least are buying test fleets for the endurance. It is a better fleet truck, actually a better electric vehicle, a better pickup truck all the way around more efficient than more efficient use of energy than tesla okay anyway just look at the size of the battery in the range anyway so uh, the conclusion i have now is the issues facing lord sound motors are all essentially financial they're there's they're ready to go they're testing they're going to get certified they have to certify that, that there's these are all minor details everything's ready to go uh, as far as the product goes. Okay, will will Lord Sand Motors have enough cash to start production? Uh, will Lord Sand Motors have to raise more capital? I think the answer here is probably yes. Uh, I had mentioned in my last uh, video that uh, you should pull up your socks and get ready for a capital raise because it's going to be coming. Um, LMC has, a, has no debt. It's got a clean balance sheet. Strong balance sheet as far as that goes. You know, they can borrow. They can issue bonds. Uh, you know, uh, Tesla issued convertible bonds. Uh, Amasa Lala, Lala, Lala Pitapon, whatever his name is, uh, he bought a ton of them. And the bonds were at a certain strike price where they could be converted to stock. I think that's something Lordstown should look into. Uh, it makes sense uh, and it won't dilute uh, stockholders right away and uh, the bondholders would be protected from any default uh, that's something uh, can LMC go to a stock sale to raise capital maybe uh, institutional buyers I don't know about the public buyers everybody's in the public has been holding a long time I don't know if they're going to go for more but Anyway, and we also have the uh, AP stock credit line to raise capital, okay? Now, they've, they've raised uh, the capital from the sale of the plant and the stock sale of $50 million to uh, Lordstown from Foxconn, along with the $230 million uh, of the deal, which is being parsed out in, uh, you know, $100 million segments and then uh, so forth. But uh, uh, this is this is a strong capital raise. But, you know, these car companies, they always they always need $500 million. So that's $300 million. Go figure. Um, anyway, they, they can they can use that AP uh, uh credit line to raise capital this is going to dilute stockholders too i i think this convertible bond issue you know if they if they could pull that off i think that would be the way to go in my opinion anyway uh and this is my conclusion the main and perhaps only issue facing lmc is cash it it's unlikely they can cut expenses. That they have been very efficient and very good stewards of their capital. Stewards of their capital, they don't have a lot of waste, a lot of fat to trim. Uh, they sold their major assets, so there isn't much left, much left to sell. I don't think there's anything left to sell, and uh, so that's not an option. Uh, so the balance sheet analysis is very important going forward. Um, I have not 
looked at the figures from this call of course their loss is narrowing each quarter they've gotten it down five cents a share again their r d expenses are, are following the sag expenses because of this legal thing are a problem uh the sales expenses are probably going to go up after production starts but but they but cash is critical okay and it's so obvious i mean i don't even have to say it now we have the possible uh, federal ev loan program award here now i've been doubtful about this in the past because uh the federal government has always favored ford on, on these uh and they have actually given lesser manufacturers the, sh the the short end of the stick let's put it that way foxconn is joining them on their loan applications i did a short video on this this could make a difference um they can see a way of getting paid back with foxconn doing the manufacturing Th this is a possibility i think the possibility of this has gone up i i was didn't even mention it in a lot of videos because I thought it was just too far out there. Now with Foxconn on the loan application with Lordstown Motors, uh, you know, that's that's a key. So the key is the cash burn rate versus the cash on hand. Again, there's a lot of efficiencies coming from this sale and lower head count. We still have this burn rate with this DOJ and SEC investigation. A problem. It's bleeding capital. Um, I don't know how we can make that uh, go away. But anyway, so we're going to have to most likely do some kind of credit raise, uh, capital raise. Like I say, I would go with convertible bonds uh, on favorable terms for the buyers. Um, you know, the cash burn rate versus the cash on hand is the question. All Lordstown has to do internally besides production is get these models certified and they already have them built and you know they're they're you know all the way there on manufacturing i mean all they got to do is start really get these certifications and start manufacturing i mean i think the parts parts uh issue is holding them back obviously and i think they may be dragging their feet on certification because why spend the money when you know you can't get the parts to do the production anyway Anyway, uh, so what, what this comes down to, I think the last thing that uh, Lordstown has any variance in and any influence in, what will the contract manufacturing uh, agreement with Foxconn be? Um, will Foxconn give them favorable term terms uh will foxconn uh finance their production costs uh based on uh sales uh guarantee you know the financing on their on their sales you know saying uh the, so let's say lord sign goes to foxconn and says look we got an order book with this many orders in it uh loan us the money to do the production based on these orders and uh, we'll pay you back when we sell the vehicles will foxconn do that i don't know how much will foxconn charge to manufacture each vehicle uh this is all to be negotiated this has not been spoken of by either party